So you followed the instructions in part one to a T. Now it's time to get a little bit more creative. Using what we've already created in our CAD, we can start developing and moving forward our bathroom design. Now, speaking from experience, it is significantly cheaper and significantly easier to leave all your plumbing fixtures exactly where they are. That means if you have the toilet on the left, the shower in the middle, and the basin on the right hand side, you should in reality leave them exactly where they go. To relocate the shower and relocate the vanity is a huge cost. But at the same time, in my personal opinion, if you're doing a renovation, you're doing it right and you're not just doing a cosmetic renovation that will basically just be a different set of colors and materials rather than a functional change to that space that will improve the overall architecture in itself. So that's why in this tutorial, we're going to break it down, destroy half of this bathroom entirely and replan an entirely different space that works functionally for all users. So at the moment, we're basically just going to get rid of everything. We are going to completely knock everything down. Personally, what I would do is I would highlight everything, delete those items from site. You can see that they still appear as a trace reference so we've come up to window toolbars and palettes and then activate our trace and reference we can throw that to the top of our bar and untick the trace button so we no longer see what was there previously at the same time i'm going to demolish all of those internal walls that we created highlight all my internal tiles and my mirror as well i am going to leave this wall just there for the time being so i can actually indicate where that wall goes so if I delete all of those items, reuse one of these walls and draw a brand new wall in here, I'm gonna put that 800 millimeters back. So typing in 800, pressing minus, I can go ahead and delete that last set of tiles as well. Personally, I've thought long and hard about what this bathroom should be like because it is my everyday bathroom and it is something that I'd like to look a lot nicer. So looking at this in 3D, we see that the space remains pretty much the same as what it was 30 seconds ago. If I marquee that space, we'll see that we still have our tiles, we have all of our walls, and we have a very small window that basically does nothing in that bathroom. Personally, I would also demolish and rebuild this window as well. Let's go ahead and delete that window so we have a fresh, clean slate. To me, walking in from the central position of this bathroom is a logical space, so that's fine. We don't wanna mess with the outside flow of the bedroom itself. We do just want to mess with what's happening on the inside. In my professional opinion, I always believe that if you have the budget for it, you tile from floor to ceiling every single time because bathrooms are wet areas. They get destroyed, they get mold, they get all sorts of things all over the walls and it's so much easier to clean tiles than it is to clean plasterboard. So in this instance, I'd be using a polished plaster product that could be used on the floor as well as the walls that would act instead of a tile. So for me to actually be able to do that and articulate that in 3D in twin motion, I'll go show all, select my slab for starters, command T, change my tiles, let's change that to paint shale gray for the time being, just so we designate the same color. I'm also gonna paint the interior of all of my walls that same color and the blade wall that I've created entirely in shale gray. Now, as you can see, we have the inside of our bathroom completely created as the shale gray or polished plaster product. Personally, I like to work with a three color scheme. So in this instance, I'll be working with timber, the light gray, which is the concrete and the black as well. Let's come back into our ground floor plan and map out what we're going to do. Personally, I believe that the shower should be on the right hand side. So once you walk in, you have the option of left and right. Your vanity should be in the middle as you walk in and then your toilet can continue to be on the left. So let's start by creating some cabinetry behind the toilet. Personally, I think it is a complete waste of space to have nothing behind the toilet. So I always like to use a concealed toilet system and then use the surrounding space as cabinetry. Okay, so I've dropped in the cabinetry here on the left hand side in front of my toilet. So the toilet will be able to sit behind this concealed system panel. There'll be two panels on the right hand side if I change my settings to construction, we'll see the handles that I've created. We have one wood cabinet on the left, one wood cabinet on the right, two above, and a bulkhead for our grand ceiling feature, which will come in soon. I wanna include a toilet on the left-hand side that is a wall-mounted toilet. So this is currently what I have as my setup. If we come into 3D, we'll see that toilet created perfectly 
in line where it needs to be with the flush plate just above the lid as well. If we marquee that space, it gives you a much better, much clearer overview. Now, like I said, the vanity should be in the middle of this space. So we're simply gonna use a multi-basin cabinetry 25. These are the current settings I have set up for this individual cabinetry along with the tap style to as well wall mounted. Moving back into our 3D space, we see that our cabinetry is now centrally aligned to our space. We have that polished plaster in the background and we have a unique ability to create a walk-in shower on the right hand side. Now for me, there are three elements that make up a good shower. First of all, it has to be walk-in. So let's create a wall on the right hand side. We have our walk-in shower here on the right hand side. If we go to 3D, we'll see we have our polished plaster wall on the right hand side coming up to the vanity basin and then glass above. Personally, I like to have glass still, even though it's a pain and a nuisance to wipe down all the time because it lets an abundance of natural light into that space and you're not blocking any light by creating wall. Next, you wanna introduce your rain head shower or any particular shower head style that you like. And last but not least, we don't wanna forget about our channel drain or our cutoff. When you have an open shower, in my personal belief, there usually should be at least a 10 to 20 millimeter set down in that shower so the water can't come out and also a channel drain right at the edge so when the water does flow out, it doesn't go past. Now, some people like to have their channel drains on the opposite side or directly behind the shower, like in this instance here. However, this is just my personal preference and you can put your channel drains wherever you personally like. However, I much prefer to stop the water before it comes out to the door. Now we are missing a couple more things. First of all, we're missing the window that we need to install into this bathroom setup and we're missing some sort of beautiful mirror decoration and some feature lighting. Now, the ceiling could be your feature lighting. You could have additional feature lighting. Personally, I like to create moody, inviting spaces where showers are a little bit more poetic rather than just stale and white and boring. So for me to create something a little bit different, I would like to introduce a half moon mirror with two pendant lights on the right hand side. To create that, we can simply use our slab tool from the start and then convert it to a morph. By converting it to a morph, we can instantly create our mirror in the background, cutting it in line with our wall and also duplicating it so we have some sort of glass 3D element behind that we can articulate LED light in twin motion. Now I'll quickly point out if you would like a copy of this file or any file I create on ArcCAD on YouTube, you can get it through the Patreon link below. It is one of the very first links, so be sure to check it out when you get a spare moment. Now, if you don't wanna go overboard and you don't wanna do ceiling feature lighting, I'd suggest two feature pendants on the right-hand side here of this vanity basin. Something similar to these teardrop pendant lights that I've simply created using different sets of columns. So that's a 10 millimeter column 760 high, 1640 above the ground. Same information for that one. And last but not least, I've manipulated a third column in the middle to create it as a actual glass lamp. Now, if I were to renovate this bathroom, I would genuinely go all out and I would spare no expense. That means I'd introduce some sort of feature ceiling to the design. The design itself is relatively simple and we have the added benefit of the bathroom already having a 2.7 ceiling. So we can introduce a drop bulkhead in down to 2.4, 2.6, or to whatever we really want to create the feature we're looking for. Personally, I think it would look really nice if we were able to emulate two drop timber bulkheads. So one above the toilet and one above the actual bathroom space. That can be simply created by offsetting two slabs, 150 millimeters from each edge and duplicating them across. So to show you what that looks like in 3D, basically what I've done is created one slab and a second slab, both in timber, two lamp sources underneath, which are again, just 50 millimeter high concrete slabs with lamp settings attached, and then the ceiling created in 3D that was originally there. I just never designed it before. So the ceiling, I'd most likely also create in a polished plaster so that if anything went wrong, you could wipe it down very, very easily. So if we change that to shower gray all over, it'll create that automatically in twin motion when we start adding our materials. Now, from an architectural point of view, if we come back to our floor plan, we'll see that we enter through that same cavity slider that was originally there. We've manipulated none of the exterior walls. We've just gutted the internal. I know that the partition walls are all timber frame and I know that the slab is concrete. So we will have to cut new concrete channels into the actual slab to be able to get our drainage across, 
we'll be able to manipulate this vanity because it's very similar to the location it is now but the shower is going to be our biggest challenge. Nonetheless, by putting the shower here, we have the perfect ability to introduce a brand new window on the right hand side, which is significantly larger. So if I'd introduce a new window, I would make that a top hung sliding window that basically the whole top panel drops down and introduce it into our space. I'd make sure it is approximately the same size as this opening and as far away from the shower as possible and also introduce a 45 degree sill so that all the water that may potentially fall onto that window naturally drains away back into the shower. Reviewing that in 3D, we'll see that we have our top panel able to slide down and let all that natural light and natural ventilation into the space. We'll see we have our shower on the right and we have our beautiful space that allows much, much more natural light and is significantly more usable than the previous reiteration of this bathroom space. Now that design is basically everything that we're gonna do in ArchiCAD 25. We are now gonna take this into twin motion and create a beautiful 3D render of the space in a matter of minutes. We've converted our ArchiCAD model into a twin motion file and transferred it across. We can start manipulating and working on this environment. As you can see, it's just a portable cube at the moment. I've sectional marqueed that space and taken out that front main wall so we can get a beautiful image front on. At the moment, the location is completely wrong and irrelevant. So what we're going to start doing is start by changing the location. Let's change that to Perth, Western Australia, which is where I am at the moment. Let's say about 12.30 in the afternoon is a good time. And I'll also adjust the north point across so we get that natural light coming in through that window perfectly to emphasize the addition of the window space. Next, I'm gonna change the background to none because we don't need any information there. And also change our weather settings to a little bit of cloud, just to give it that harsh contrast. The most important thing in the environment now is to simply adjust the material of our floor. So if we can find where our axis north point is, we can drag that up a little bit just to the bottom of that slab and change that to my personal favorite plastic red replace and change the color to pure white. Now we also want to take the reflection all the way down so we don't get any sharp, harsh elements coming back and bouncing back into our space. We can now start working on our actual environment and what we've created in ArchiCAD. The simplest way to start is by starting with the environment itself, which we are creating that polished plaster look. So going into materials, concrete, we'll just use a simple base concrete look. I'll drag that up to maybe three times the scale to be able to get some texture in. Next, I'm gonna come all the way down to neon lights and introduce my neon lights into my lamp elements. So I have lamp elements dedicated behind the mirror in the two lights and also above the bulkheads themselves. They are the main features of this bathroom. Next, we wanna change the glass in between our shower and our main bathroom space to two-sided glass and reflective on the actual outside of our space. Finally, we wanna introduce mirror into our actual mirror and change the wood to something a little bit nicer and a little bit lighter in color. So personally, I'm just gonna use the ash timber on the, both the bulkhead and also the vanity itself and the background cabinetry. And there we have our finished bathroom layout, completely redesigned, completely brand new, extremely different to what we started, extremely luxurious, but not spending an absurd amount of money compared to what you could do by simply just changing the colors of the bathroom and achieving nothing functionally from it. So overall, I think this is the best bathroom design for the space that we're working with. And I hope that this gives you some inspiration to be able to create something fantastic in your next bathroom renovation. Anyway, that is all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you smash the like button and the subscribe button if you enjoyed this content. And like always, I'll see you next Monday.